So we are going to do the 2014 AMC 12B problem 25. Find the sum of all the positive solutions of 2 cosine 2x times cosine 2x minus cosine of 2014 pi squared over x equals cosine of 4x minus 1. Now when we're looking at this equation, the first thing that we want to do is try to make everything in terms of the same functions. Now this cosine of 2014 pi squared over x that's kind of its own thing. There's not really much we can do about that. But with this cosine of 4x, we see already that we have two instances of cosine 2x. And if we could write cosine 4x in terms of cosine 2x, that would make our job a lot easier. Luckily, we can because we know the double angle identity means that cosine of 4x is the same as 2 cosine squared of 2x minus 1. If we have a minus 1 and then minus another one, that'll be a minus 2. To simplify the algebra here, what I'm going to do is let a equal cosine of 2x and then b equal cosine of 2014 pi squared over x. This way we just don't have to see all these cosines while we're dealing with the expression. If we substitute that in, we're going to get 2 times cosine 2x is a and then times this is a minus this is b equals 2 cosine squared of 2x is going to be a squared and then minus 2. So this is just a little nicer to do algebra on. If we expand this out, 2a times a is 2a squared, then minus 2ab, that's going to equal 2a squared minus 2. Notice we have a 2a squared on both sides that are going to cancel out. So we have negative 2ab equals negative 2. And therefore, from this, if we divide by negative 2 on both sides, we're going to get that AB is equal to 1. Or in other terms, that means cosine of 2x times cosine of 2014 pi squared over x must equal 1. So let's think about when that's true. First of all, remember that the cosine function, which we're only looking at real numbers here, has to be between negative 1 and 1. It can't be any bigger or any smaller. And what that means is both of these cosines have to be equal to 1. Because if one of them were less than 1, then the other one would have to be greater than 1 to compensate and get us back to 1. But that's not possible. So we have two options. Either cosine of 2x equals 1 and cosine of 2014 pi squared over x equals 1 or we'll look at this second, they're both equal to negative 1. That way, when we multiply them together, we'll get the result that we need. So let's take a look at this to start out. If we want cosine of 2x to equal 1, let's take a look at what the graph of the cosine looks like. If we have a unit circle like this, remember the cosine is going to be the x value on that unit circle. So if we want the x value to equal 1, that's only going to happen at this point right here. And this point happens when our angle is equal to 0. So in this case, our angle is 2x, which means we're going to set 2x equal to just 0. But then remember, we can also go a full rotation around the circle, which would be 2 pi, and then any number of times. So if we went around the circle twice, that would be 2 pi times 2. We're still going to end up at that same point. We can cancel the 2's on either side and get that x is equal to pi times some integer n. Now what we can do is take this for x and substitute it into our second equation. So that's going to get us that the cosine of 2014, notice we have a pi squared over pi, so those are going to cancel out. We'll just have 2014 pi over n, and this has to equal 1. Now if we use the same reasoning on this cosine as we did for the first one, if we want the cosine of 2014 pi over n to give us 1, that means that the angle on the inside is going to have to equal 2 pi times some other integer k. Now in this case, if we simplify, we know the pi's are going to cancel out, so we can get rid of those. And then if we divide by 2 on both sides, 2014 is going to turn into 1007. So we get 1007 over n is equal to k. So in this case, remember that what we're really trying to solve for is the values of n, because as soon as we know the n's, then we can go back to get the x's. So we don't really care about what k is, but the one thing we do know is that k has to be an integer. 
this has to be a whole number. So what that means is we have to figure out the n's so that when we do 1007 divided by n, we still get an integer coming out the other side. And remember, in this case, we're only looking at positive solutions, so we don't have to worry about the negative versions. Well, 1007 divided by what would still give us a whole number? Well, of course, we know that n could be 1007, because 1007 divided by itself just gives us 1. We also know n could equal 1, because that would also give us a whole number. But now the question is, are there any other solutions in the middle? And the answer to that has to come from the prime factorization of 1007. Because if we divide 1007 by any of its prime factors, that is also going to give us a whole number. So all we have to do now is figure out the prime factorization. And probably the most tedious part of this problem is finding the prime factorization of 1007, because there's not really an easy, quick way to find those factors. But one trick we do know is we only have to check prime factors up to the square root of 1007, which is about equal to 32, because we know 30 squared is 900, so we go up a little higher than that, that'll get us to 1007. Now we know 1007 is odd, so 2 definitely isn't a prime factor, 5 definitely isn't either, but beyond those easier cases, we're just going to have to try dividing 1007 divided by 13, divided by 17. If we keep doing that, what we'll find is the other two values are 19 and 53. So if we do 1007 divided by 19, which is less than 32, we'll get 53 as our result. And that is the other prime factor. 53 is prime. So we know that if we divide 1007 by 19, we'll get 53, which is a whole number. And similarly, if we divide by 53, we're going to get 19. Since 19 times 53 is 1007, these are all of the solutions for the case where both of the cosines are equal to positive 1. So now we can take these solutions, store them for later, and check the negative 1 case. So we have the solutions that we found earlier, which are 1, 19, 53, and 1007, all multiplied by pi. And now we need to look at the case where both of these are equal to negative 1. Once again, it's going to help to start out just by drawing a unit circle. Cosine is the x value. If we want the x value to be negative 1, that's going to show up right there, which means that our input, in this case for the first function, is 2x. That's going to have to equal pi, because pi radians around is going to get us to here. And then we can always add 2 pi times some integer n. Now, if we want to solve for x, we know x is equal to pi over 2 plus pi times n. And once again, we can go and plug this in to our second function here. So cosine of, notice again, pi squared and pi are going to cancel out here. So we're just going to have 2014 pi on the top divided by 1 half plus n. That's going to equal negative 1. Now, to make this a little simpler, let's multiply by 2 on the top and bottom so we don't have this 1 half in the denominator. That's going to leave us with cosine of 4,028 pi over 2n plus 1 is equal to negative 1. So now we can apply the same reasoning for this input here as we did for our first input of 2x. We know that this input, 4,028 pi over 2n plus 1, that's going to have to equal pi plus 2 pi times some integer k. That's the only way we'll get to negative 1. And now in this case, notice the pi's are going to cancel on both sides. And what we should do is multiply by 2n plus 1 on both sides. That way we get the 4,028 by itself. Everything's in the numerator, so it's a little nicer. That'll leave us with 4,028 is equal to on the right side, we have 1 plus 2k. And on the left side, when we multiply that over, we're going to have 2n plus 1. Now let's look at what happens when we expand out what we have on the right. 2k times 2n is going to give us 4kn. Then we have plus 2k times 1 is 2k. 2n times 1 is 2n. And 1 times 1 is 1. 
So 4,028 equals 4kn plus 2k plus 2n plus 1. Here's the question. If k and n are both integers, is this ever possible? The answer is no. And the reason is that 4,028 is an even number. 4kn plus 2k plus 2n is also even, but then we have this plus 1 on the end, which means that this right side, if k and n are both integers, has to be an odd number. 4,028 is not an odd number, which means there are no integers k and n that satisfy this equation. That means that it's not possible for us to get cosine of 2x and cosine of this input to both equal negative 1. There are no solutions on this side, so we actually don't have to worry about it. And that means that the solutions we got initially are the only solutions we need. So if these are all the solutions to the equation, all we need to do is find the sum of those solutions. So if we add up pi, 19 pi, 53 pi, and 1,007 pi, our result for that sum is going to be 1,080 pi. And that's the solution to this problem. So the way that we got here, first we started out with this equation. We tried to get everything in terms of the cosine of 2x so that it was easier to deal with everything in terms of the same function. From there, we used a substitution just to make that algebra easier. And then once we get to the product of cosines being 1. The key here was to play around with the unit circle and how integers interact with each other. For the first solution, we had to look at the prime factorization. And for the second one, after some multiplying around, we found out that, of course, an even number can't equal an odd number. So we didn't have to worry about that. We add up all those solutions, and that is our answer.